Hey, it's Rick. Welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how I built this vacuum pallet for about 30 bucks. It's handy for screen printing posters on your press. I started with this sheet of half inch MDF I picked up at a big box store. It's two feet by four feet and costs about 27 bucks. You'll need to cut a couple of pieces 20 by 24 inches, a couple of pieces half inch by 24 inches, and a couple of pieces half inch by 19 inches. You can really make this any size you like, but I thought it would be best to make it the size of my frames. Once I get the pieces cut, I lay out a one inch by one inch grid on the top for all the holes I'm gonna have to drill. Then I use a 332nd bit to drill the holes. I think this size works well for this. If the holes are too big, you run the risk of them creating a depression under the paper, and you might see that when you screen print. If you make them too small, you may not get enough vacuum to hold the paper down. Once that's done, I sand the top and bottom to make sure it's perfectly flat. I also use a stiff wire brush to remove all the ragged bits of MDF that are left around the holes from the drill. Now I glue on the half inch by 24 inch pieces around the edges. I'm using wood glue and some brad nails for this. I cut a few more half inch pieces and I'm using them randomly in the middle to keep the top from sagging when I apply squeegee pressure. MDF is pretty flexible and at this thickness it's not very stiff. Next I need to add a flange that the vacuum will attach to. I modeled this part in 3D and printed it on my FDM printer. I'll put a link in the description. I put the MDF on some scrap 2x4 so as not to drill through the top of my table saw. Once that's done, I decide to pre-drill the holes for the flange screws. They're pretty thick and close to the edge of the hole and I'm worried about splitting the MDF. Now it's time to glue on the back. I give every edge a coat of glue and set the back on and nail it down. I'm fortunate that I've got this old pallet that came with the press and it has a mount I can repurpose for this. Otherwise, I'd have to make a new one. I like to mount the bracket to the press before screwing it to the pallet, just so I can see how it'll line up with the screen. In the end, it has to hang offset a bit from the screen. I forgot there's a piece on the press under the frame that will interfere with it, but that's no big deal. This is the foot control switch I'm using for this. It came with just bare wires and I had to attach an extension cord to it myself. I'm not sure where I got this one. I've had it a long time, but you can get these with plugs already attached, which definitely makes things easier. What I need now is some kind of guide that I can use to make sure I always put the poster in the right spot. This will make registration easy. I decided the best thing would be to cut this out of a piece of scrap illustration board. Once done, I tape it down to the pallet where I need it. This will make sure that the posters are returned to the same spot every single time. When you're screen printing posters, you have to print one color and then put it aside to dry and come back later and print the next color. You can't put posters under a flash dryer or run them through a conveyor dryer. They'll just catch fire. In practice, this is how it would work. Load your poster you want to print on, step on the pedal to activate your vacuum. Here I'm just using a shop vac. Then screen print your poster, let go of the foot pedal to stop the vacuum and make it easy to remove the poster. If you find you're losing a lot of vacuum pressure through the unused holes, you can cover them with any kind of tape, but I don't find that to be necessary. That's it for this one. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you have an even easier or cheaper design for a vacuum pallet? Don't forget to hit all the buttons on your way out. Thanks for watching.